The middle way approach, umelam as we call it in Tibetan, is a peaceful means of conflict resolution. It's based on principles that we can all relate to, nonviolence, dialogue, interdependence. And in any situation of conflict, it seeks to find a resolution that is mutually beneficial and addresses the interest of all the key parties involved in the conflict. In Tibet today, the reality is there is political repression, social discrimination, economic marginalization, environmental destruction, cultural assimilation. On a daily basis, we hear painful stories coming from inside Tibet. And it concerns every Tibetan and also raises the question, how can we alleviate the sufferings of Tibetans as soon as possible? How to replace political repression with basic freedom, economic marginalization with economic opportunities, environmental destruction with environmentally sustainable policies, social discrimination with social equality, cultural assimilation with cultural preservation. We have to solve the issue of Tibet through dialogue. The Middle Way approach was conceived by His Holiness the Dalai Lama Following the People's Republic of China's occupation of Tibet in 1959, His Holiness was forced to flee to India, and 80,000 Tibetans followed him across the Himalayas. In the early years of exile, the Tibetan leadership sought to restore Tibet's independence. However, the international context of the time and the deteriorating situation inside Tibet called for a more pragmatic and realistic solution, the Middle Way approach. In 1997, through a resolution in the Tibetan parliament in exile, the middle way approach was unanimously adopted as the official position of the central Tibetan administration based in India, which is the democratically elected representative body of the Tibetan people. At that time, Deng Xiaoping stated the question of independence we cannot discuss. We cannot negotiate on that, on that point. Beside that, everything open, we can discuss. The middle way approach has enabled us to establish direct contact between the Tibetan leadership and the Chinese government. Since 1979, because of our adopting the middle way approach, we've been able to send several delegations to Tibet. Since then, several rounds of Sino-Tibetan talks have been held, culminating in 2008 with the presentation of the Memorandum on Genuine Autonomy for the Tibetan people to the Chinese leadership. This was followed in 2010 by the presentation of a note on the memorandum. The memorandum details the Tibetan people's vision of autonomy and self-governance. It defines the basic needs to be addressed to enable the preservation of key aspects of Tibetan identity, such as language, culture, religion, education, and environmental protection, to name a few. It is entirely based on the uh, provisions of the uh, Constitution of People's Republic of China and also the uh, autonomy law. We have not asking anything uh, which is out of the provision of the constitution and the law. Medieval approach is applicable to uh, any conflict in the world, right from the uh, conflict within the family or within the community or within the nations. It is not uh, uh, seeking one side winner or the other side loser, so that uh, both sides can be satisfied when the solution is found. Different countries around the world have demonstrated that the autonomy sought by Tibetans is possible. For example, Nunavut in Canada, Greenland and the Faroe Islands in Denmark, South Tyrol, Trentino in Italy, and Aceh in Indonesia. It has also enabled us to maintain a Tibetan presence in several countries, and key amongst these countries is India, where we find the largest number of Tibetans in exile and also where the Central Tibetan Administration is based. Because the middle way approach is grounded in the reality that we find in Tibet today, world leaders such as President Obama 
and Archbishop Tutu can openly support our efforts. A growing number of Chinese individuals, including Nobel Peace Laureate Liu Xiaobo, are increasingly aware and support the Middle Way approach. This is very important because ultimately, no matter how much international support we have, finding a lasting, peaceful, and acceptable solution to the situation inside Tibet will come down to the Tibetan and Chinese people. For most of history, Tibetan and Chinese people have coexisted peacefully, so we do have a precedent in that regard. China aspires to become a world leader, and it will have the moral authority to match its economic and political presence by demonstrating to the international community that it can peacefully and sustainably address the situation inside Tibet. We are willing to not seek separation from China because to have genuine autonomy for Tibetans is to restore basic freedom of the Tibetan people. When the Tibet issue is resolved, it will fulfill the aspirations of Tibetans in Tibet. It will fulfill the legacy of the elder generation and dreams of all those people we have left us. That will be the day when Tibetans will have their identity and dignity restored. That will be one of the best stories of the 21st century. The middle way uh, approach is the most sensible and pragmatic way. I support the middle way approach. I support the middle way approach. This kind of approach can potentially serve as an inspirational model for many conflict areas in different parts of the world. It's grounded in a, a real appreciation of the complexity of today's world. I support the middle way approach. This is a practical way to have freedom on the ground in the united Tibet. I support the middle way approach because it allows for the Tibetan inhabited areas within the People's Republic of China to be under a single administration and have meaningful autonomy. I support middle way approach. This is an idea whose time is coming.